for you. I know it's early um, for you. My day's ending over here. <laughs> it's okay. I, usually I get up really early. Uh, but today I just kind of slept in with like, whoa, I've got to get up in half an hour. Uh, <laughs> but sorry. it's good. No, no, no. Don't say sorry. I, I should be up. How, how, where are you, where are you calling from today? Um, I'm actually out from California out here, and it's hot. Okay. Um, we're just yep. getting warmer out here. So we uh, usually grow year-round because it's so warm out here. We have hardly, yeah. like, frost ever. Wow. Fantastic. I mean, that's such a I, – I lived up in Byron for the last five years in subtropic conditions. Kind of it's probably similar to, to California. It's more wet. But it was great. There was no frost. But we had the um, the problems of pests because, of course, without the frost, it's not killing the pests. Do you have similar issues? Um, I do from time to time. I don't really as much, though. I try to take care of it before it gets worse. Um, but I don't have that much pest problem. I do, but I don't have that much. That's awesome. And I'm guessing yeah. this is a lot to do with your organic practices and I would say so, because everything that I do here, I'll show you a little bit later on, it has yeah. something to do with worms in it. <laughs> so um, I think that's what it is, because I've read a lot. I've watched a lot of videos about gardening, and that's what's the part of uh, vermicomposting. So that's why I just, I don't know, it's very addicting. So if, if once you start um, composting, it's just like you don't stop. <laughs> it's really hard to it stop. Bit, yeah, that's right. It is a bit like that, isn't it? Once you realize how easy it can be. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the main, we've, we've spoken about this a lot with guests that have come on, the main barriers that people come into with God, well, people are resistant against, against composting is I don't have the time and it's too hard. I don't have the space. Did you experience any of those resistances before you got into composting? Um. So when I started composting, it's because of the pandemic, really. Um, I you know, I am still busy, but um, I, I made time for it when I was here at home. I had nothing else to do. Um, actually, everything was, um, and the shelves were emptying, you know, like um, nice. the supermarkets, home improvement stores. And I'm like, okay, I have to start doing something. Um, my whole backyard was actually bare. There was nothing wow. going out here at all. So if you see through my IG, um, you know, I spent a lot of time in the backyard with my husband and my kids. Um, there's a lot of things that we changed also too along the way. And we've grown so much food in a small area so if you're saying that you need a big area to grow food it's not true you just need i would say soil with warm <laughs> and grow um, with many other things you know you need the light the proper amount of light water um, air so there's there's so many things that you can grow in a small space that's wonderful yeah I, and i think that's a good segue to take us a little tour for your garden if anybody hasn't uh seen lisa's instagram you want to wonderful. see my garden right now yeah yeah can we can <laughs> we do a little tour okay wait I don't, okay i'm really new at this okay so that's okay. I, I okay how do you flip your phone or or can i just like walk with my phone you can just pick it up and, and take it around as long uh, as there's signal we should be able to um right. and you can so, flip it by pressing the little um uh, arrows yeah. if, if that's helpful okay there cool we go. all right okay okay here so this is my compost. Uh, this is my sub pod. This is the original. That's um, looking great. What's around I that? that is that it. pumpkin, okay, zucchini? So, okay, I'm trying to grow as much as I can. I think if you follow me, yeah. you know that I grow so much in one small area. So um, yeah, so this is the kale here. Here, this is kale. I have zucchini going right here. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go it um, vertical so that okay. um, I get more, I get more, I guess, I guess more, harvest out of like the space that I could have here and so you see here that it is growing pretty well I don't really I mean I might have a zucchini maybe not really it's just starting to grow I grew these from this one actually I grew this one from seed so I'm really proud of myself wow. on that one and yeah, I have got my, my, right. my greenhouse back there so you have my little greenhouse and I have corn so I'm growing corn yep. right here and last year I had this up on the same area I had corn going here with beans um uh you know you know, popping out. I don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was all over the place. But Is, I, and, and was that position intentional to have your sub pod up against your uh, your the greenhouse, wall. the wall? Actually, yes. Yeah, it's actually against the wall because there, it does provide some shade. Um, my whole area is full sun, so if you right. see my whole garden back here, it's just it's wow. all full sun. So Beautiful. I yeah. So here th there's partial shade from this wall. Um, so that's why I plant here, but then I have the mini pod, which I'll walk over there a little bit. Um, the mini pod is in full sun and it does fine. So I don't have any issues. Um, 
Well, I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you. Sorry, we just got. Like. There we go. We got you back. Got okay, you're okay. You got me. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so this is um, this is the original cell pod. I really love it because they have all the instructions of, you know, what to do, how to use it. Um, you'll see some um, things here. Let me see. Let me see. I would say bugs because it's it's normal. You'll see roly poly. <laughs> Slugs, I don't know where. I don't see them there now. But you usually see slugs, and they're normal. And you see the eggs. You see that, what is it, right there? You see the oh, right. warm eggs? Could you, can you show yeah, us a handful right of compost? Okay. Um, okay, oh, okay, here it is. I'm going to pop it open. So you see the worms there. They're kind of... Yeah. And then um, what you see a lot... Okay, I'm going to put on my awesome. gloves. If you guys... Okay, because I'm... I can't stick my hand in dirt, but... You see, I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wear gloves on, so don't hate And me. yet you're still um, an amazing gardener. That's Yeah, so I just started, okay, so when I told you guys, I started gardening during pandemic. So that was about two years ago. And I'm, if you guys say you can't garden, that's not true. Um, you know, it's possible. I believe it's, it's, that, Lisa. It's, it's trial and error, really, too. And, like, all this stuff here that's from food waste that used to go to landfill is broken down here. And, you know, you put it back into, you know, the soil and it goes back in a cycle. So you're not throwing it, you know, in the landfill. So that's why I'm trying to um, just reduce my waste. You'll see other bugs like they You see, is that a centipede or what is that? Millipede? What is that? Can you see that? I don't see it really clear, but right. either. I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah, it looks okay, like, looks really like a centipede. At, is it? Okay, I'm not really good at bugs. Okay, so. But you'll. The yeah. Will come no, no, out you're great. Everything. Okay, and they're. At, yeah, so and this Lisa, is the, do you notice the that the plants around the sub pod grow better? Oh yeah. Um I mean they're so big, they're lush, the leaves are like just I don't know. It's just it's just crazy. And I'll show you my I'll show you my mini pod because this is just the sub pod itself. Like if I had this whole area of just raised bed, which I should have, but I didn't because I had the greenhouse inside anyways. Um I have this area and it grows so much. I mean, I was able to grow, I think four or five corn here like last year and it was thriving. And this time I tried zucchini and I tried corn on that side. I don't know how well that's gonna grow, but uh, eventually when the corn is gone, I'm probably gonna plant something else there, but I'm not quite sure yet. But I mean, everything's been growing so far. Like all of this is just, I mean, this is just in the sub pod itself. And it's a lot it's of food once it starts pr booming. producing food. It is yeah. really booming. And was that sub pod so, size um, big enough for your family? If you, you're a household of three? Um, I think if I could, I would probably, if, if I just expand this whole area to just all raised bed, I think it probably would. I, I haven't right. tried because I have, okay, I'll show you my other... I have so many other... Yeah, let's let's see what else. Okay, that's, so I can't believe this is two years of work. Everybody who's just jumped in. This, Lisa no, okay. just started right? gardening two years ago. <laughs> and and so, she's got an oasis. A lot of people say, you know, I mean, okay, I was afraid to start. And I just kind of leaped in and, and did it. And tr truly, it's a, it's a trial and error. And you're going to learn a lot of things. And, you know, you just go at it. You know, if you fail, it's fine. And then cell pod makes it hard. So that's why I'm, at, I'm actually out here gardening. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So this is my mini pod and I milk prep a lot. And that's the reason why I have so much waste at one given point. So I kind of like have it here and then I have it over there. Right. So this right here, this is a little full just because um, I've actually taken um, the worm casting from the original and I put okay. it all in, in here. And ah, I put all this in here. So that's why this is a little right. full. I don't know where I put my gloves. Okay, well, okay. That's okay. You don't have to show us. So you to put your hand in there. I'm not going to dig my hand in there, but here yeah. I'll show you guys. Um, that and then looks the leaves, great, Lisa. The leaves are actually from um, my yard, and I don't yeah. use any um, chemical or anything like that. So I just put everything back in here. And my, yeah, so this is Fantastic. my mini. And yeah. Let me and so what, what do we have growing around actually, the mini right now? Actually, I forgot to, show, I forgot to tell you guys. To make sure, yes. once you, if you guys do have or plan to have one, make sure you fill up all the holes um, back That's here so that you don't have pests tip. going through. And then you can kind of tell by these little events. Um, you see the light shining through. So if you have, mm -hmm. um, I guess, light shining through here, then you know you need to fill on the back end. It will eventually will deplete a little bit. You just need to replenish um, soil or just take 
the uh, warm casting from here and just put in the back side because it does happen sometimes. So just make sure that you fill everything up to avoid any um, pests. And that I like that really you guys have blocks tip. here too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's why I'm yeah, always walking no, we... to make sure. Because <laughs> there are some um, tricky, tricky guys out there, like a raccoon we saw. Yeah, like, I was going to say, I have a raccoon, latch. possums and stuff like that, but they don't go in the backyard yet because uh, okay. I just started gardening back here. I haven't seen them yet, but I do see squirrels. So, oh, great. Okay. Yeah. But, and have you had any like pests as in any mice or anything come into your sub pods? No, I, no, not yet. <laughs> I don't have any as of yet. I, I don't hope have not. Any I have a lot of lizards. I have a lot of lizards. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I used to get a lot I mean, of lizards yeah, in mind. Yeah, I have a lot of lizards here, but Hello. Um, this I... part, let me see. Um, I have all this growing right here. Um, let's see. I, I know I should remove some things and I'm, I don't because I let it kind of grow. And yeah. then eventually I would remove it. So I have my warm slash cooler vegetables going on, going on in here. So um, I have my tomatoes that I just plant it down. I have, these are um, broccoli, which I should not grow. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just testing. Like, I know you should not grow between another type of vegetable. But I'm just going to try to see how it goes for right now. And I think that's the fun part of gardening and also composting. So it's just trial and error and just to try to figure out what you're doing. So. I, I, I love that. I think that's, that's a really good message to have, trial and error, because nature doesn't have any rules. You know, it has, you can have guidelines to help you, but you know, ultimately like nature's always changing and there's a different environment and there's always different factors. So we can go by these guidelines. Like you said at the start, like the plant needs air uh, for oxygen for their uh -huh. roots. It needs sunlight. It needs water. You know, the wind affects it as well. So if we can, we understand those principles. We can create an environment, but it doesn't mean it's going to go hundred percent right. And there's always something we don't understand, yeah. like all the microbes in the soil. Uh, we have no idea what's under there. Uh, so it's, that's mm -hmm. really, really cool that yeah, you, you child and error, like, I mean, it seems like yeah. you've got, a, got a lot of positive, uh, feedback. Like this looks incredible. And there's so many flowers I've noticed. Why, why is that? Why do you so, have so many flowers? Flowers. I have flowers growing in between my garden, um, to attract beneficial insects. I mean, that's the reason why I don't see that much pest, um, in my garden. I do have it. I'm not lying. I, I, I do have pests, but um, with flowers, I grow a lot of my vegetables with flowers because it does attract beneficial insects into the garden. And, um, you know, I, I mean, they do their job. <laughs> so, and we've, oh, we've just got a question, Lisa. Um, yeah. Are you going organic in your garden or using chemical pesticides? Good question. So um, I use a product. I use Dr. Earth. And um, on their back end, they actually use a lot of, well, they try to break down um, – supermarket waste which wow. is green waste yeah and then they make it into fertilizer and um soil amendments i guess so i've been using them so i guess if that's what it is that's what i use more of sounds um, like you're on the organic side yeah it doesn't yeah, i don't think you're so using any chemical pesticides in this garden right There's, yeah i don't yeah. really need to because with all the flowers and um all the companion um plants that I grow I don't have that many issues like this I didn't spray this at all and it's fine and that looks incredible yeah and this is my Brussels sprouts here I mean I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie to you see I do have holes I you know you're gonna have yep. some pests I always check yeah, yeah, with my leaves you know I hear like there, uh -huh. there's one right there see where is it I saw it right there you see it, uh, it? Okay. yeah I do I do have it I do hand pick see out here you have to be observant you know you're out here in the you know you're not here, you know, you're gonna have pests, <laughs> but they're not that bad. Um, they do, you know, nibble you know, right there, they do nibble into some things, but you know, it, it's 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 out here. <laughs> but look, I, 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 I completely, of, like, onions. I oh, yeah, great. That they're yeah, using so that I, as a companion plant, are you? Yeah, so I use onion, I have garlic, I have chives, so there's lots of things growing, um, in between larger plants, cool. so that's what I use. And it, and for me, I believe that, um, maybe that's the reason why I don't have that much pest. I do have it, but I don't have that much. So, um, that, right. I mean, if it's, if it's working for you, because I, the, the theory behind intercropping and, and companion planting, or one of them is, is that it confuses the insects. If you imagine an insect from a bird's eye view, they just see a bunch of broccolis, woof, they'll go right in there. But if there is a few yeah. other yeah. scents around, uh, it can confuse them. So it seems to be mm -hmm. working really well for you. And, and back to the bugs, like I used to buy an organic box of veggies 
uh, every week. And, and if there was a bug in there, I'd be like, great, I know this is organic. It's like a sign. It's, it's a little <laughs> badge of honor. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, and we should have a bug here or there on there. It, it means that if, if that life can survive on your vegetables, so can the microbes as well. And they're the ones like you want the nutrients, but you also want microbes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole different conversation. But how, yeah. How's your family's health been? since you've started growing and composting. Can you share a little bit about the daily impact of, of your life and how sure. it's changed? So I actually, well, with the pandemic and everything else, I started gardening um, for actually my husband. I wanted him to, you know, change his diet. And um, he's been really good about it so far and exercising and adds a lot. So I started growing lettuce and, you know, a lot of vegetable greens for him. So, um, short end is that he wants me to pick it for him and put it inside the fridge. So I thought that he would go outside and, you know, enjoy outside and, you know, pick some, I don't know, lettuce or tomatoes or something. But um, I, I don't mind going out here and um, harvesting because I have to check for the bugs out here to see if there's any. And then I would like hand pick them out or, you know, remove that section that does have pests to try to control it um, manually um, before I um, spray any of the, the products that I told you, which is from Dr. Earth. But um, so far, I, I, it's very minimal. Like, I've seen other gardens that have holes all over their leaves, and yeah. I, I don't hear as much. I mean, I do, but I don't have as much um, yeah. of that. Uh, for composting, my family is involved with that, too. So if I'm out here and I uh, go into the sub pod and I dump my caddy out here and the, cat, the caddy is empty in the kitchen, um, they would actually leave, like, the banana peel or the egg shell like where the caddy is at so it changes the way how um oh, i guess trained them well shoot. yeah so there my older daughter would dumpster dive <laughs> and my son wouldn't but he'll tell me he's like mom i threw this away can you go in there and get it <laughs> for me so <laughs> i don't mind doing that i mean That's okay good. i'm gonna get it for you so um there's a lot of things that we're changing and we're still changing um i think the most important part is that we're always you know we're still learning so i'm not you know, I'm not like 100% in everything. So um, I don't know, I still have questions too. And that's yeah. the reason why I really like this community, especially with Pod. you guys have great newsletter and I read it all the time and I watch um, all the videos that you have um, there in the, in the newsletter. And it gives us a lot of good information, um, you know, j just as a, just as a know-how, you know, and, and, and other things that's happening around the world or other inventions or other products that they, that, um, that I guess other people are, are, um, are using or interested in. So, um, but yeah, so this is this part of my garden. Oh, we, we just got a cooking, sure. cooking the garden patch. I bought my sub pod thanks to Lisa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we go. I'm so excited because um, I do like use other things that I compost as well. Oh, you got to so, let like, us these grow are as my well? tower section because this is actually where I started. Okay. I don't have a lettuce grow. Um, this is a, oh, a garden tower. Okay, yeah, so I yeah, have yeah. this one, which is a uh, compost. Great. Actually, compost in the top. So that's why oh, I'm telling right. you, I, like it's addicting because I this was the, this was a start, and then oh, I started great. composting more and more. I'm telling you, like it was something that I couldn't stop doing. So <laughs> once you start again, it's very. It is really a gateway addicting. drug, isn't it? It's it's a good one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. And, you know, being outside also, too, with, like, for me, I like all the colors. I like I like just being out here, especially when, I don't know, when there's so many things going on right now. I go out here and I garden. It helps me, mm -hmm. um, you know, just cope with everything that's going on. And that's the reason why my garden's so colorful and cheery, because that's, you know, the reason why I like it out here. <laughs> and also, with all this going on, I also like to see the things that are growing, Um let me see. Did I show you this part? Like, okay, so this is my tomatoes. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I think I'm trying to grow, because I'm telling you, I'm still testing. I'm trying to grow squash. I don't know how it's going to trail out right. yet, but um, I have tomatoes here. I actually have it in soil compost in here somewhere um, okay. that's smaller. And uh, I have cucumbers that's going to kind of climb across this whole awesome. thing here. And um, down here, I how much added, food do you think? Is that strawberries? Um, I don't know how much food. I don't. These are nice. strawberries. I just actually put this together about two weeks ago. So, um, so this is a strawberry, and I'm growing blueberries with 
um, oh, strawberries that's over here. So awesome. yeah, so just growing all this stuff here. And this side, I have cucumbers and, and peppers. And Lisa, can I ask you a question? Sure. When you get a garden bed, I'm assuming you get soil from somewhere. What is your process mm -hmm. when you mix amendments, compost? What do you, can you talk people through the, the basic steps? You've got a blank canvas, a, a garden bed, a raised garden bed. What do you do next? Okay, so um, I think I showed it through my stories a while ago. Um, oh, I did. actually, because I actually dumped out. <laughs> that's why I told you I dumped out my original um, to actually fill up this raised mm -hmm. bed because um, I started this raised bed recently, actually. It wasn't that long ago. So I dumped, actually shoveled, I didn't dump, I shoveled. I shoveled everything out of the original and I put it in here. Um, I think we've just got a lag on your end. Um, there we go. Other Back things here. like onion and garlic, which I, 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 it does help. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I, that's why how I start with the and and the thing is you'll see some bare spots I consider it bare because I yep. harvest from this area and I I, I keep on planting here so um, there was something growing here I totally forgot but now I'm planting tomatoes right here so um, there's always I love those little growing. towels you've got for the tomatoes oh, they're great yeah so they, these towels they look awesome. I love it because I like black <laughs> yeah yeah so, so I have this tower and I love these tower they're pretty sturdy so. I mean, and you could collapse it and break it down, but I, I just don't. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just keep it there. I, I, I mean, leave it there. Great. Yeah, yeah I leave it there. Really and then during the, I guess during the off season, I could grow like peas or something like that because we could grow peas here like twice a year here because we're so warm. Fantastic. And um, so Lisa, for people out there that are new to composting um, or, or haven't started yet, they're umming and ahhing, they're, they're tossing it up. What would you say to people out there? Yeah, I'm sorry. To compost? Yeah, to compost. Sorry, People that are just oh. like, mm, I'm not really sure if I should. Eh. Okay, that's okay. So that's where my fence was at. Um, I did not really start gardening or composting. Like I told you, all this was bare. There was like, there was nothing going on here at all. And um, it's fairly Two years easy ago. once. Yeah. So it's fairly easy once you get your, your hands on it and just start just trying to do it and comp I mean, composting the cell pod really made it easy. Like I, I would say the, the mini took me like seriously a couple of minutes just to put together minutes. It was like a box. Okay. It's like a cardboard box, but not cardboard. That's basically how it is, how easy it was <laughs> to assemble this mini. And you know, just, uh, it was so easy. And then the instructions that provide again on the lid was really easy to follow. So, um, yeah, then all you have to do is, um, I think I started by adding some cocoa core and, um, since I had worms from the original, I just moved it here. So this was really easy. And even the, um, original was easy to put together. And if you just follow the instructions, I mean, it's not that hard to do. Um, I mean, if someone's saying that they can't grow, I mean, I didn't really grow anything at all. And I'm. I mean, if you follow you're, you're me, you're living I, proof. You're literally living I've proof. I've been growing, yeah. Well, two yeah, years. So I, that... I, I, I used to grow roses and dahlias. So you'll see wow, a lot okay. of my feed with roses and yeah. dahlias. So yeah. um, I think with that information that I've taken from there, that's mm -hmm. how I'm growing all this here. So I have some foundation and the pests are almost similar. So, but oh. um, yeah, almost similar. Hey. So that's, that's really good. Like, I, I love that general response. I think it's your living proof of two years of, of gardening, composting, and you have a bountiful oasis around you. There's so much there. And not only is it great for your, your health uh, and the planet's health, but, but you've said for your, uh, for your mental health as well. I mean, that is your health, yes. but walking out there yeah. and looking at it. I think, I think it's something that people don't um, expect for it to happen. Uh, I want to ask you about that, but I've just got a question from cooking the garden patch again. From start mm -hmm. to finish, how long did it take for you to start collecting your worm manure? So I, I imagine that's from the original sub pod. That's a great question. Well, what can you um, say to that one, Lisa? It was actually pretty quick. Um, I think with the amount of, it depends on the amount of worms inside mm -hmm. your um, sub pod, of course, you know, they're going to break it down. 
Um, it was pretty fast. Um, I would say if I put something in there, it would probably take a, a week or so, or even a few weeks, depending on how much you put in there. Um, make sure you aerate it and also add um, carbon because you have to have um, your greens and your browns. And then you your, use your aerator and you, you know, um, you just mix it and just make sure that um, there's air and water because worms are living animals as well. So they would need all that too. Um, yeah, so it's, it's actually pretty fast compared to the others that I've used. So I would mm. say it's pretty fast. That's why I dump so much my kitchen waste in here. So I interchange, but I dump a lot in here. Again, like when I meal prep, I just kind of just go out here and just dump and then aerate. <laughs> and then other days I would... Um, go in my yard and I would you know pick the leaves that's falling and then I would put it in here and then I'll aerate because I, I can't do all at one time I try to do it all at one time but I don't so there's days where I just mix food in there and then other days I'll just mix my greens because there's leaves on the floor and then I'll just you know yeah you see me as a that's... plant crazy lady that's me in the backyard by myself <laughs> that's me backyard by myself I just go around my you husband a... just thinks I'm you get a lot you get a lot done though. I mean, it's, yeah. it's incredible to see how much one person can do. I'm sure you get a little bit of help from, from your husband and your children. Um, but it's, it is incredible to see how quickly those worms can turn food waste or can turn food waste into, uh, into a more soil-like matter. But when it comes to maturing, uh, which is, I think what this person is asking is like, how long does it take from the very start you're putting your sub pod to like, you're sifting out your compost, which you've shown some really good videos on. Was that three months, six months for you to get it? Well, I actually, I don't, I really do it. I really don't know. I dig it all. I dig all yeah. the bottom. I, I just can't give you an answer because I don't know. I, I aerate and then once I need it, I dig all the way to the bottom and it's just black. Just the sand is, I mean, the, yep. sand, the soil is just, the worm casting is just really, um, it's really dark. And I just, I just grab from the bottom. I just throw on, I just throw it on top. So once and this is settled, a... I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going to do that pretty soon. Cause I just started planting these yep. tomatoes down. I'm going to, um, dig all the way down to the bottom of my sub pod and I'm just going to just grab whatever it is and just sift off. I use my hand to sift off the large pieces and yep. then I, I just put it on top of the soil. So that's, that's a great method. Yeah, and, and I ask that kind of a trick question because there isn't really like a set time, like you put in your sub pod three months later, you get the soil out. It's like, well, there's a lot of factors that go in there. But you once you reach about the three-month period, the worm population is built up, you can do exactly what Lisa's saying. It's like you can just grab a, a little handful here and there, and that handful is so potent. Like you imagine a teaspoon of healthy soils has more – more a bigger population than this than the planet earth so more than seven billion so if you imagine if you can just take a handful and put it inoculate it into a garden bed it's going to do a lot of work and and you can't buy this sort of compost because it, if you get compost from a store it has been through a pasteurization process to kill pathogens but it also kills beneficial microbes so it really is a game changer and this is for our next question which will be our last question how do you mm -hmm. prepare soil before you start planting we have a small courtyard with terrible dry soil. We need love. We need some love. <laughs> Good okay, question. So I mean, us, yet... Like I told you before, this whole backyard was just dirt and a whole bunch of weeds. <laughs> we didn't work on our soil. That's the reason why I wanted um, a raised bed with cell pod in it so that I could actually work, work my, like rebuild my soil basically and grow food. Um, the reason why I started gardening and composting at the same time is because there's so many benefits to um, composting with worms. Um, they actually, I mean, I, I, I don't, I probably, you probably have all the answers, but um, there's lots of things that I've I read. <laughs> that, well, you have most answers. Well, you know, the worms, when they, you know, when they, I guess, tunnel through the soil, yeah. you know, they, mm -hmm. they, leave, they leave their little, I don't know, what would you call it, their... It's, it's so it's like, like it's, a, it's a slime or... yeah it's slime. a slime but it's called glom <laughs> it's called glomalin and really? it, it's I just like it sticks 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 the soil together and um yeah how i see it is like building a house yeah. uh if you don't have any glues or nails you don't have any structure so the worms are creating the structure which allows like a house to have airflow you have windows and mm -hmm. pumping it's like water so it's just like they really without that structure everything falls apart so, sorry to get in there they said, yeah, I told yeah. you. no i'm telling you that you know there's so much more to that because um you know with worms creating tunnels and air and you know per also providing um roots to grow because they need air yeah. so mm -hmm. and then and then also not just that but oh here i, I mean out here in california we have a drought um and 
Um, there's lots of other things that I put in here, like my Ola. Um, I don't have a watering system for, for my raised bed. So I hand water to restrict that. And I have Olas, which are um, terracotta pots, I guess, would you call it? And then you yeah, put it into yeah, the yeah. soil. Yeah, so oh, I great. use that. And I'm yeah. trying to um, reduce the amount of water that I'm using. Um, I've purchased rain bill recently, so I'm going to add that into um, some parts of the house to collect rain. So I'm trying my best Fantastic. to do that. That's going to be soon. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm great. Just I can't wait to see the update on that because yeah. it's so important. Are you being in a hot climate, a healthy soil is one part. You can retain more moisture there. But uh, having some of these uh, water-saving techniques like Ola and, and um, other ways, but watering, I guess, not in the hottest part of the day. You know, so many little tips you can do to ensure that, that uh, your water is being used sustainably. Uh, but healthy soils, I would say, is probably one of the best tips, right? Like, you've, mm -hmm. have you noticed better soils uh, retain more water? Yeah, I mean, I look at everything that's growing here. Um, yeah. It has all of it has worms in it. Some something like I mean, I would either um, take the worm casting. I think the only one that doesn't have worm is back there, where my uh, okay. blueberry because it's a, a yeah. it's, it's, it's acidic. So, but everything yeah. else, I do not have. I have worms in it, just not that one, and all my little pots. But other than that, all like everything that's growing in my raised bed and even these containers, there's worms in it. So, um, like I'm, it, it does make a, 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 a huge part of, uh, you know, just helping the environment and, you know, just reducing your waste going back into the landfill. So that's something that really changed my mind. I'm telling you, like, it's very addicting, like all this stuff that's going on here. And, you know, it, it's, I don't know, it's just like a step that everyone should move forward to. I would call it just a compost movement. And um, I've been enjoying using Subpod. And the reason why I'm here, normally you don't see my face on Instagram or anything like that because it's all about gardening. And the reason why I'm here is because, you know, I do believe in, you know, what I'm doing here and it does change like my family and, and what they do and how we eat and what's growing. So um, that's, that's just why I'm here. Oh, that's wonderful. No, thank you. I really enjoy uh, watching your Instagram stories and uh, your posts. Like there's so much learning going on there. So anybody out there that's watching, uh, and hasn't seen Lisa's beautiful garden in the story and how she takes us through it, like jump on it after this. It's awesome. And I think we're going to end it there. I want to say a big thanks to Lisa for joining us today. I really appreciate your time uh, and taking through us for that wonderful tour. And it's so inspirational to have somebody in two years just grow this incredible garden. So that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Lisa. Um, do you have anything to say to the people watching? I would say if you don't have like a compost bin or anywhere, I think you should just start. It's so easy and Subpod makes it so easy to just start. And like I told you, I have two so far. And um, I mean, if I was able to expand my garden and claim land from my husband, I would totally do it and add another Subpod. I, before, I'm going to send you a photo of our upcoming product, which is going to be a grow bag, which can fit a Subpod mini. And I'm really excited about this because it's going to make composting a lot more easier uh, and affordable and accessible for people like uh, that have never tried before. You can set it up on a balcony, on grass, on concrete. So I'm, I'm going to get your thoughts about it after this. I'll send okay. you a photo. Okay, that's great. I can't wait to see it. Awesome. Uh, great. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us today. Uh, really looking forward to the next slide that's going to come up tomorrow. We have two. We have one on composting with children and composting 101 with Kate. So please join us for them. Thank you so much, Lisa. Have an incredible day. And Thank you for having me. Keep feeding the soil, everybody.